Ryan. I am the director of the MBO. Well, the MBO has a, a large number of uh, specialists in different aspects of volcanology. We have experts in risk analysis. We have um, experts in gas and petrology, experts in making measurements of the volume of the growing dome and on seismic, seismology expert expertise as well. The, the, there are a number of different specialties in volcanology and to get the best picture of what is happening at a volcano you want to take all of those different pieces of information and put them together. So that means that the scientists working in different disciplines need to come together and share their, their data and interpretations so that uh, when you look at everything together, you can get a clearer picture of what the volcano is doing. My name is um, Thomas Christopher, and my job title is geochemist, petrologist at the observatory here in Montserrat. Looking at the degassing of the Soufre Hills volcano, um, so the main, the main thing I measure is sulfur dioxide flux. And that is is done using um, UV spectrometers, um, doing traverses or in a in a fixed network. I also use a an instrument pack, which is called a, a multigas, which um, generates ratios of four gas species, um, the two sulfur species, that's um, sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, as well as carbon dioxide and water. So the trick is if I can get a flux for SO2 and I can ratio the others to SO2 then I can derive a flux for the others based on the, the ratio and the SO2 flux. Um, there is an instrument that we have which is not totally operational at the moment. We're trying to get that back up. It's called uh, an FTIR and what that does it gives us the ratio of chlorine to sulfur dioxide. So what we're looking at basically is we're looking at degassing at different parts of the system, whereas chlorine and um, other halogens, for example, fluorine, they come off very shallow, around two kilometers, whereas the sulfur species are, are coming off around mid-crust, um, between maybe eight and, and six kilometers, and then your carbon dioxide and water are coming from much deeper. So we're looking at degassing at different parts of the system, and we're comparing these these gases and how they, how they, they ratio to each other, and it tells us a lot about how the system is is reacting. My name is Dr. Adam Skinton. I'm a volcanologist and I have responsibility for dome volume and deposit mapping of the erupted products from the activity here. Um, my main responsibility is to monitor the lava dome, um, map changes on the lava dome using uh, photogrammetry, uh, thermal imagery, and uh, so I use uh, different types of cameras and also obviously uh, a lot of computer processing to generate 3D models of the uh, lava dome. Uh, I'm also responsible for mapping the deposits from the activity, so explosions and paratastic flows. And that's just basic traditional field work techniques. My name is Roderick Stewart and I'm the volcano seismologist at Montserrat Volcano Observatory. Lots of computers, that's the main thing. But, but to record earthquakes we have basically seismometers all around the volcano which detect ground movements and then the data from all of them is radioed back to the observatory where we use computers to process it. My name is uh, Barry Pico Williams. Um, I mostly go by Pico, so um, that's generally who I am. Um, as it relates to the MVO, I am the instrumentation engineer at the Montreal Volcano Observatory currently. Uh, Karen Pascal, Dr. Karen Pascal, and I'm uh, the volcanologist specializing in volcano deformation. So for volcano deformation, we are using a, a network of uh, GPS uh, stations and also of uh, what we call a total station, which is basically the same thing as uh, they would use in the building industry to calculate distances. Uh, yeah, and we have like various other um, equipment, but that would be the two main ones. Victoria Miller, and I'm the Hazard and Risk Specialist at MBO. Um, what that means is I'm responsible for leading the hazard and risk activities. Um, uh, and you might be thinking, what does that actually mean? Well, so I bring together 
past and present studies of the volcano and, and the hazard phenomenon that it could produce. Um, for instance, looking at how often they occur and what the spatial extent or how far spread they might be. Uh, I do that through computational modeling, as well as identifying gaps in our knowledge and advocating for ways to fill those gaps. Um, I'm also responsible for developing the risk function, uh, which is a combination of hazard with people and things like buildings. Uh, I develop and apply methodologies which allow us to estimate the risk uh, and that can be used to provide an evidence base for making decisions. In terms of equipment, well the main thing I use is the computer um, and I use that in order to take, uh, undertake modelling and also spatial analysis um, using software, things like ArcGIS. Um, but when there's a need to collect new data in the field, then tools like GPS are used to map the distribution of hazards or at-risk elements such as buildings or roads uh, and we also use photographs uh, either ground-based or aerially for instance from the drone or a satellite image and uh, well uh, one of the things I was going to say is a lot of the work I do is actually based upon the the data sets collected by the other scientists at MBO so you know their equipment and, and using that knowledge to bring it together. Okay I'm Rockwell Tapi Sayers. I'm a scientific assistant here at the Monsa Volcano Observatory. My job is to collect and analyze um, deformation data in the volcano. Um, I use a few instruments, um, like the GPS is and also photo station for measuring the EDM lines. My involvement in St Vincent has been related to the growth of the lava dome that occurred initially, uh, which was later destroyed by the explosion. And so I went down there to um, do my photogrammetry work on the lava dome to try and get 3D models of the lava dome as it was growing to, to measure its size, its volume, to measure extrusion rate. I also took the thermal camera down and uh, measured the temperature uh, of the lava dome. And then after the explosions had stopped uh, and activity had died down, I went back down there to uh, start working on mapping the deposits from, from the explosive phase of the eruption. In terms of what I brought to, to that eruption, um, it was not my first visit to that, to that volcano. I've, I've been collecting um, gas data from this volcano for a while now, albeit it was not SO2 flux because there was no SO2 to flux but I was taking the multigas there. So one of the things I was trying to do since about 2017, maybe even before that, 2016, was to develop baselines, multigas um, racial baselines for the different volcanoes in the Caribbean. And that was one I would have visited on a few occasions. So the point is I already had, had baseline data for that volcano. So one of the things I really wanted to see was what the ratio was doing. Because even though there was there was activity at the surface you know um there's no guarantee that there's a deep component um included i mean you could have shallow activity without a magmatic input for some reason you could you could have some sort of um disturbance in the shallow system and you erupt a, a fairly shallow magma but there is no deep push so one of the things i i looked at with the multigas was the chemistry the plume chemistry and that more or less confirmed that there was deep degassing. So we knew that there was a deep magma down there since around January. So it was more or less just, it's just a waiting game to see how the eruption unfold. Seismology monitoring. The key thing in the run up to that, uh, that eruption was the monitoring of the seismic activity. And we'd worked along with people in Trinidad over the month or so to put in the seismic equipment and we had enough in that we could follow what was going on. So my expertise was to actually read the, the, the seismic activity and that was what was actually used to um, start the evacuation before the eruption. Okay, so um, when I processed in Vincent, uh, I took with me several um, skill sets. Um, I would have, the main one being uh, my volcano engineering skills um, and at the time that I was there we our, our main task was to rebuild the infrastructure or the network the monitoring network 
And so most of my time there was spent looking at the monitoring network, what was destroyed, um, what could be repaired, what had to be re what can be reinstalled, um, or what had to be redesigned and then built and then installed. So most of my time there was spent sort of reestablishing the the monitoring network and making it continue to make it sort of fit for purpose, not just for the immediate. But we, we sort of looked at the, the long term. Generally, um, one of these networks, once they're installed, except if there's an eruption, tend to last for a very long time. And so we're looking at like um, over a 20, 30 year span. Of course, instrumentation have a, um, a shorter lifespan, but of course that would just be um, replacing short bits of it as opposed to the entire installation. So that's where my, um, my main task and main focus was. Um, I was also um, able to focus on other areas, you know, assisting in um, sort of how persons would cope with the disaster um, because that's an area that I have here and experience that I take with me from Montserrat and I was able to share with, with small groups my experience in Montserrat and how they could use that experience to, to help themselves. Of course, my family um, is there, my, my mom and my relatives are there and, my, and a lot of my close friends as well. So I would have been able to share with them as well. So as I said, I mean, it would have been um, a wide area, a wide range of um, skill sets and knowledge, but um, my main focus would have been the, the monitoring network. So I've been working with the person uh, in charge, basically, who's uh, like based in uh, Trinidad. So at the Seismic Research Center in, in uh, Trinidad, uh, Dr. Michael Camero. And so I've been assisting her, like I, I bring like a kind of about eight, nine years of experience in, a, in a deformation monitoring, um, where to install new station, for instance, which we needed to do in St. Vincent. And so I have like a, a PhD in deformation modeling. So that's also something that I brought, um, you know, to the team, basically to, to kind of uh, find out what the magma is doing, like the, the movement of the magma um, on, on the ground. Skill sets I brought were in the risk assessment function and also uh, undertaking expert elicitation. Uh, so I undertook assessments for fieldwork life safety risk, uh, and that is the amount of risk team members would be exposed to for key sites when undertaking necessary measurements or repairs, for instance, uh, and we used that to guide our operational decisions. I also undertook a structured elicitation, um, which is a method to bring together the expert opinions uh, of the scientific team and get quantitative estimates of the probabilities for eruption scenarios. Um, so right from the onset of dome growth, we were regularly and systematically assessing the likelihood that the eruption would continue with dome building stop completely or indeed that the eruption would move to an explosive phase as it did but uh, since the eruption i've also um, gone into the field to collect uh, impact and damage data uh, and this is really important for us to use for future risk assessments okay well um, i have a lot of experience I, I would say i mean after working on this volcano for over 20 years i mean experience with what comes basically plus um i just said um my deformation skills as well so I knew a lot about deformation and the equipment that we use for that so I took that with me to St. Vincent. 